Good morning. It's like 6 15 in the morning. I couldn't sleep anymore, but I didn't want to get up either. But I need to follow the recommendations I give to my students. Get out of bed, be productive, get here. So here we are. Um, first of all, priorities. Excuse me for a minute. Thanks. This is the stuff you deal with when you watch a program that is poorly planned, poorly executed, and done in one take. So, all right, today is the 30th of April, 2020. It is a Thursday. Thursday. Uh, birthdays, uh, Johnny Galecki from Big Bang Theory. He was Leonard. Kristen Dunst, Gal Gadot, just to name a few for today. Um, today, National Honesty Day. So me sharing my fatigue, honest. National Raisin Day. Anybody remember the California Raisins? Yeah. Raisin Day, National Mahjong Day. I'm sure there's an online like Mahjong emulator that you could find. Um, and also today is National or International Hairstyle Appreciation Day. This is what I came up with, with what I literally had within arm's reach. I had a hair tie and this little flower leggy thing. That's what you get. Quarantine hairdo. And great musical timing. <laughs> oh, fudge ripple. Okay, let's get another one going here. Also something that's important that I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. Today is International Jazz Day. Oh yeah, gonna talk about that in a little bit. Um, let's get our This Day in History's taken care of. 1789, George Washington inaugurated. Not in DC, because it didn't exist yet. Nope, it was New York City. New York City, Federal Hall in New York City. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you're still watching this after 46 episodes. Um, I kind of feel like I'm slow jamming to This Day in History. Let's see if I can try it again. Okay. 1859, Tale of Two Cities, first published in literary periodical. A chunk a week, a chunk a week for 31 weeks. That's patience. Oh, 1885, the establishment of the Boston Pops. This is in Boston Pops. The check the playlist. They're on there, Boston Pops. This one makes me hungry, so I don't think I have the patience to wrap it. 1904, this day in history, the debut of the ice cream cone. Something I missed, yeah. I could go for a good ice cream cone, but the question becomes the ideal ice cream. I think ice cream is dependent upon one's mood and one's setting. Totally making this up on the fly. Please keep that in mind. You know, so for example, I get really thirsty after I have chocolate ice cream. I adore chocolate ice cream, but I get very parched after that. Sometimes you want ice cream that has chunks in it. Sometimes you want to go chunkless. And I think also there are certain types of ice cream that are better in a bowl just because of the messiness. But we could have a debate on that one. Here's a really interesting this day that I had no idea about. This day in history, 2018. A new species of beetle in Malaysia, discovered in Malaysia, named after Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, the, the grim of Vilius Leonardo DiCaprio. He also has a spider named after him. How cool are you to have two creatures, <laughs> two creatures named after you? So Wikipedia has this whole big page. That's not my primary source, BT Dubs, just saying. No offense, Wiki. Um, but I, I checked Wikipedia and there's a whole list of celebrities that have creatures named after them. 
new life goal. Life goal one, meet Tom Hanks. Life goal two. There were so many life goals. Uh, like, get a creature named after me. So if you know anyone, my name is available. All right, so we will get to International Jazz Day in a minute, but I'm going to read a detective story for you today. So this detective story, the answer, will be on tomorrow's morning mug. This is kind of like a, a Pebbles Goes to Hawaii type hairdo. Oh my. You're so patient with me. Thanks everybody. All right. So this is a two minute mystery and the detective's name is Inspector Nose. Inspector Nose. Sorry, detective. My bad. He's an American. Detective. Detective Nose had just wrapped up a case in the upper town district of Trenton and since he was in the area decided to stop by and pay his friend Dr. Dean Lamar a visit at the museum. Dr. Dean was the director in charge at the museum and had been so for the past five years. By all accounts, he was doing a fantastic job. When Nose arrived at his friend's office, he saw that he was in the middle of looking over some resumes. I'm looking to hire a new tour guide to help with our new ancient Chinese exhibit that's due to arrive next week, said Dr. Dean. I expect that this exhibit will attract hundreds of visitors and to tell you the truth, I'm a little worried that I may not be able to find a suitable guide to help with this attraction. Detective Nose decided to sit down and assist his comrade to sort through the large stack of resumes. They were near the end of the pile when Dr. Dean pointed out a resume to Nose that he felt might be a suitable candidate. Typed on a plain white sheet of paper was the resume of a man whose name was Jeffrey Montgomery. Jeffrey spelled like Joffrey. Okay, just in case that makes a difference to you. Joffrey Montgomery. Totally just dipped this in my coffee by accident. Whoops. <coughs> Excuse me. Typed on a plain white sheet of paper was the resume of a man whose name was Geoffrey Jeffrey Montgomery. Under his qualifications, he had a few relevant jobs listed with all the required references, but it wasn't the job history that caught Dr. Dean's attention. Rather, under the heading of hobbies and interests, Geoff, Jeff, had listed that he was very much interested in the Chinese culture and had been studying their language, alphabet, geography, religions, history, and customs for close to 10 years. The resume then went on to list other desirable traits and details that would be of some benefit to the position. I think we may have found our candidate, Dr. Dean said. With his previous job experience and ex extensive background in Chinese culture, I doubt we'll be able to find anyone else who's more suited for the task. I think I'll give him a call. See if I can meet with him, have an interview with him this afternoon. I'd hold off on phoning him just yet if I were you, said Inspector Nose, Doc, sorry, Detective Nose. There's something off about his resume that leads me to believe he's not totally honest about his qualifications. What mistake did Joffrey make on his resume. So my AP world students, Ethan's been two for two on these little brain teaser things. Let's see if he can figure it out. So now that we got that taken care of, International Jazz Day. Today is International Jazz Day. Um, some of you know that I was, or I've, I've been lucky enough to be one of the teachers for the Jazz Studies course at our school. Uh, it's been, what has it been, out of three years? Three, four, three? We'll go with three. So there's the high school band director and there's me as the social studies nerd, just seeing where all these things overlap. So for International Jazz Day, I've put in, posted some awesome links in the description. For once, check it out. Uh, one is just a generic, nice overview of American jazz history from the Smithsonian. And one of the things I love about jazz is the the culture and socialness is really important to understanding kind of the depth of where jazz goes. And one could argue that jazz is 
truly an American creation without jazz, of course, without blues and country, we wouldn't have rock, we wouldn't have a whole bunch of other genres. So to play with that, I have a website for you to go to. It's called musicmap.info. Full credit to Adam Noble for showing me this. Musicmap.info. So you might not be able to see this very well, but it's a cool interactive that you can click on a genre, for example, jazz. And it tells you a little bit about it and you can do some zooming. So you can spend a whole lot of time doing this, um, but you can see how different genres of music, not just jazz, inter, uh, interrelate. So whether it's methods of performance, whether it's certain types of instruments or the way the music is structured, you can see how everything is interwoven and interrelated and you know how much I love that. You know, how much I really like find that fascinating. So um, I'm gonna make sure that you have that up there. So you can take a look and f once you get into some deep sub genres, you'll be able to listen to some samples of, of music that fits. Some of the stuff is pretty wacky, like my hair. Uh, some of it is um, pretty chill. And it's nice for those who are open to new musical styles. You can be like, hey, I like this. And it'll branch off and give you some other ideas. So that leads us to our last thing for today. Our word of the day, assemblage. Noun, assemblage, a collection or, or gathering of things or people. That's what these morning monks have turned into, an assemblage, assemblage of randomness. Um, music map is a, an assemblage of all of the interwovenness of music, which I find absolutely fascinating. Um, and us being here together, whether you're watching moments after I post it or days, weeks, months after I post it, um, I still consider us an assemblage of the best humanity has to offer. You are amazing. All of you, you are incredible. Um, today's mug, I don't know where the lid is, but it still counts. I am uh, four days away from 50, so I'm scraping, but I can do it. Um, this was a, a tr like it came in a pack of two, like a travel mug. I think this was from like, I either stole it from somebody or it was my first year of teaching, I'm not sure. But it holds the liquid. What else could anybody want? So behave, be good, be kind, take care of each other, please recycle, please wash your hands. Do what you need to do today. Check a few things off that to-do list. And please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, real quick, highs to um, Krista from high school. Oh my gosh. It's been so good to reconnect with you over Facebook. Um, I got a message of, of thanks the other day from Isa um, about the, the Glenn Miller episode. Thank you. Um, and, you know, Lisa V reached out again. So let me know how things are going. Miss y'all. 30 days, half September, April, June, and November. Oh, tomorrow is May Day. Tomorrow is May Day. Oh, I have so much work to do. Okay. Well, officially signing off for the month of April <laughs> for Hetrick's Morning Mug. Hasta mañana.